today we got a uh, yearling red deer down um, we're going to take this one for meat uh, so I'm going to demonstrate to you how I break it down field dress it and prepare all the meat to be carried out by backpack we're in some uh, steep country here a lot of timber a long way from the vehicle and camp we got about 3k walk out of here it's a bit of a an old log here so I'm going to use that to my advantage and try and prop her up against that um, makes it easy to uh, to work on it by myself so I carry all my field dressing gear in this little dry bag everything's in the one spot and I lay all this out before I start to uh, um, there's nothing worse than going back in your pack covered in blood looking for something so I use a ceramic sharpening rod I use a um, when I have to a work sharp field sharpener when the knife gets really bad I've got to touch it up with that a heap of little meat hooks and I use that to hang the meat to stop it from getting dirty also helps it cool down my knife and a spare knife so I just lay them out ready to go and uh, I can just come and grab them as I need them so I'm going to start by removing the shoulders so I come down to the bottom of the leg and follow that shin bone down I don't have to go all the way just yet get that first cut opening and then skin back around this knuckle Now I'm on the, the, the hoof side of that knuckle, I can cut that hide off there. So now I pull the hide down at about 150mm down from the knuckle. Front leg. You feel there on the inside there, and you'll feel a little bit of a knuckle. So you come back about 20 to 25 mil, it's fairly similar on most animals. You put your first cut across there. One around the side. And I can actually see the joint just there. So once you've nicked that, it's just a bit of back pressure. And cut it off. So now to remove the shoulder itself, I feel in here, that's the main tendon coming off leg bone or the shank, and I just put a little hole in there, and that's where I put my first hook, and I just hang onto the hook like that, and cut the shoulder off. So there's the, the, the brisket, or the chest cavity, and there's a line in between here. Just you can actually see the separating tissue. There's not a lot of muscle to cut through there. You just keep following that separating tissue. Just there will be the main artery feeding blood to the shoulder. So that's going to bleed a bit when you cut that. So just keep following that separating tissues. We're not actually cutting through any muscle there. Till the very bottom and if you feel in there you'll actually feel that's that's the bottom of the shoulder blade and that's as far as you need to go just to get to the bottom of that and then come around the bottom of that and cut it off so there we are one shoulder taken off Next challenge is find a handy tree. Uh, find somewhere to hang it, and there it's up in the air, it's cooling down, and it's never touched the ground, no dirt whatsoever.
Right, so I just continue that cut I, I started earlier when I came down the leg and meet up with that and I just remove the rest of the hide. And you just don't rush it, take your time. It has a better job at the end. One venison shoulder. No grass, no dirt. And it's already cooling down in the breeze. So we'll let that hang there while I get the, the other shoulder and back legs off. Now I'm gonna do the back leg on the same side. So we, we work one side before we roll it over and do the other. Similar again, you come right down on the bottom shin bone, open it up. With deer always open from the inside out, so you're not cutting the fibres of the hair. It makes a lot cleaner job. And then, similar to the front leg, you skin that back past the, uh, the back knuckle there so we can take the bottom of the foot off. So at the bottom there is the back of the hamstring, that, that big strong connecting sinew that comes on the back of the knuckle. You don't want to cut that off or damage that because that's what we use to hang the back leg. So as I'm skinning down the inside here, I'm being very careful. And there I've exposed it there now. And just run your knife down the side of it. But don't ever cut that through crossways. We want that to stay intact. So you just be nice and careful as you skin back around that knuckle there. And there you can see the good area where I'll put the hook. The hamstring's still intact. Now to find the knuckle. This one's a little bit harder. So as you bend the, the leg, that's the top half of the knee. And you come back, I said about 30 mil. Roughly about there. Just nick the connecting tissues on the sides. And you can see the joint just through there. So that's been nicked on both sides there. And then similar to the front leg, a little bit of pressure. So now that's taken off. And that hamstring is still connected there and that will hold up the whole back leg that'll hold up the whole animal actually if you want to hang them up if people cut them up here you lose that and then you've got to work out another way to hang them up so similar to the front leg inside the flank there that's the line we're going to cut So as you come in here, just follow that muscle line in. And that's the, the center of the pelvic bone there. There's a very fine line between the muscles on either side there. And there's the bone. Once you hit the bone, you just keep coming around. And there is the hip ball joint. So I've already, <laughs> I've already, I was going to show you, but I've already cut that through. And then you end up cutting the artery and it bleeds a bit. Follow that bone through. back 
hollow that pelvic bone all the way down and then you pretty much just all you've got left is the hide against the backbone coming out next to the tail open the hide up and halfway down the belly making sure you don't go through into the stomach so rib fillet back strap muscle runs down along there so you skin down to the backbone and it starts just in front of that pelvic bone back there. So I start by doing a cut all the way along the backbone and just coming in along the side of the bone like that. Another one just in behind that pelvic bone. And this one here, you can actually see the line of the muscle there. That's the last rib there. So you can't hit the stomach in this section. Just cut to the ribs. And then after there, just stomach lining. Just make sure you don't cut through it. front here now you can just follow those ribs down then once you get down so far some people call it the short rib it stops just there just follow that down. Until you come on to that backbone, there's a little bit of a knuckle there, and you just roll it over. You just keep following that along. Until you're pretty much at the base of the neck, and that's the last of your back strap muscle. There it is. Again, and there it's hanging up, cool down. So now we've rolled it over and we do the whole process again on the second side. Again, finding that front knuckle and coming back about 20 mil. Cut the tissues all the way around. And did it even went straight through it there. So it's all but straight through, not quite. There's a little bit of a curvature in that knuckle there. And there's the bottom of that shoulder blade, and that's as far as we need to go. Always just be aware when you're doing this, put your hand underneath to make sure there's no rocks. I have damaged good knives by just cutting straight through the hide, straight into a rock. That's the second shoulder off. I'm going to find another tree. So we're going to do that last back leg now. Follow the shin bone down. So that's before you break it, and I couldn't quite see that one. I just put a slight nick across the tissues and put some pressure on it, and it opened straight up. And again, 
bring this back strap out, come down along the backbone. There's your last rib there. So I'm not going to punch at the stomach here. Just work along the bones. I've got to be careful not to pull that too hard. The meat's that tender, it's starting to tear it off. That's one nice tender back strap there. Can't wait to get that in the fry pan. Well, if you're like me and you like eating, head to tail and like all your offal and you've got to go inside the stomach to get it out. So, I've been working on this one for about, I don't know, probably 45 minutes now, a lot longer than we normally do because I'm filming and the gases in the stomach have started to expand so it's quite tight at the moment. So I'll just start down here, right where the stomach meets the pelvic area and just one little nick and there's a small intestine coming out already. So you've got to get your fingers in between the stomach and the lining. Now that I've opened it up, the stomach's already basically pulled itself out. If we open up the diaphragm that separates the, the lung cavity and the stomach. And then follow down along the backbone. that's the stomach out. So right against where that diaphragm was is your liver. I never leave the liver behind. The liver off young deer is every bit as tender and Moist is lamb's liver, and we love cooking up what people call it lamb fry and bacon, or well, it's venison fry and bacon. So we're just about finished here and just about to start packing out. So instead of hanging the liver and then the, the heart and kidneys, I'm just going to put them straight in a bag, keep them clean, and that'll go in the pack shortly. So just below the, the liver, the kidneys are both. For, I located very close to the backbone. There's one. And there's the other one just on the other side there. They're actually in a little area of themselves, so once you cut that connecting tissue, you can pull it out. Yeah. Two fresh kidneys. So just at the bottom of the chest, in front of the lungs, is the heart. So it too is in its own little bag. You got to cut it open. And then cut off where it's connected. I'm going to do a recipe for this one day, so stay tuned and wait for that to come out. But yeah, one of the nicest parts of the animal. Back here is the tenderloin. Well, a bigger animal would be known as the eye fillet. Not very big on this one, but it's definitely worth taking.
can nearly peel that off my fingers. Well, that's one front shoulder and one back leg. They've been hanging in the tree the whole time we've been doing that. And they're already quite cool, so now I'm getting ready to put them in my pack. If the excess, I just wrap it around like that. And that keeps the meat clean and my pack clean. Before I put the meat in the pack, I keep the bottom of my pack fairly compressed, um, pulled in. Other packs might have um, horizontal straps. And the reason being is if, if you just let all that meat go to the bottom of your pack, it's like a big heap of jelly right down low. And anything to do with backpacking, you want to keep the majority of your weight up a bit higher. You don't want it all at the bottom. So keep that all nice and taut at the bottom before you put your, before you put your meat in. So I'm only just letting those, the bulk of that meat go to there, not all the way to the bottom. So I'll go get the other shoulder and back leg and I'll put them in the same. So the bulk of that meat now is in the middle. And all my offal and back straps, I just put in a heavy duty plastic bag. And that will just go up the top there. So all the field dressing's now done. I still gotta strap me pack up nice and tight. But now I do a reverse of what I did at the start, just making sure I've got all my equipment. Put it all back where it came from. Two knives, two sharpeners, and eight hooks. A little bit of white insulation tape that I had on them. Stop them from rattling on the way out. Make sure you take any rubbish back with you. I like to use white. If I was doing this at night, it's easy to find that way. So now I know I've left nothing behind. I'll put that in a pack, put my gear on, and we'll be out of here shortly. So there's a fair bit of weight in there now. So one of the most important things is to stop the movement. Warm meat very jelly-like and it'll move around a lot so get all my compression straps done up starting at the bottom and nip the two side ones up get some pressure into the middle a bit more back into the middle and I'll do the top ones same again with these top straps, nip them up a bit. And just keep going around them all now, a bit at a time. You think you got it as tight as you can get it, move it all around and go again. So there's next to no movement in that. So that's a whole yearling deer in that pack now. I've left the bones in because that's the way I want to hang it when I get back. It's only a 3k walk out here and it wasn't an extremely big one. If I had to do any further distance and a bigger animal, 
I would have been boning it out and just taking the meat. So before I try and lift all this up, I just loosen off my hip strap a bit. make it easier to clip up once I've got all that weight on. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. I've even had it that way. I've laid down on the ground and slid into it then rolled over and got up that way. Or you can sit it up and sit down in front of it. It's a bit awkward. Get your shoulder straps on. Now I've got all the weight on my shoulders. So the tree would be handy, and anyway, you can just get up nice and gradually using your knees, not your back. And all that weight now is on my shoulder straps. So before I just loosened off this hip belt, so it's nice and easy to do up. Now I talk those hip belt straps up, the same as the compression straps on the pack. Personal preference, but the heavier the load, the tighter I like this. Yeah, that's very firm. That hip belt should be right in line with the middle of your hip, your ball joint and your hip there. Now your breast strap. Ready to go. Which on that, it's time to head home for a cold beer.